Hello guys, so welcome back to our VHD lessons. In this lesson, we're gonna explore the designs uh, that we did uh, for synchronous circuits like up, down, counter, you know, sequence, detector, and other stuff that we explored in the lecture, you know, in VHD. How to code such designs in VHD. Okay, we're gonna start first by the uh, the uh, D flip flop based up, down, counter. So we did the up, down, counter using uh, uh, D flip flop. We did it also using JK flip flop, okay? Uh, so let's explore and also D, D flip flop. So let's explore the, you know, the, the D flip flop based, uh, you know, up down count, which is basically the circuit that we see here in, in the screen, on the screen, okay? Just to assemble uh, D flip flops, assemble XOR gate and assemble, uh, you know, uh, an inverter. So let's explore the code here. So, uh, the whole design has one input, one bit input, which is X, and two outputs, YA and YB, which represent basically the number, the binary number. So I combined YA and YB into uh, a standard logic vector of two bits. And why is this? Because as we will see in the test bench, you can convert this, uh, you know, uh, uh, this, uh, this, this vector into unsigned, so you can see you know, the number zero, one, two, three digits, you know, not zero, one, zero, like this. It will be easier to, you know, to, to follow. Okay. Uh, I have made here, created many signals because we're gonna, we have many internal signals. For example, we have an internal signal, which is DA. We have another internal signal, which is DB. Okay. Uh, also, we have an internal signal for Q, QA and the QB and the QB and the QB bar. Okay. So we have many internal signals here that uh, we will use in our design to make the connection for this circuit, okay? So first of all, the input of the flip-flop uh, DA, the input of the first flip-flop DA is basically X, X or uh, QA, X or QB. That's basically the first you know, equation we have here. Then the second X or is equal to QB bar. Okay, now I'm instantiated. So I have already, uh, you know, uh, a deep flip flop, a package. So I included this package and they instantiate these uh, two, instantiate this package two times for deep flip flop A and deep flip flop B. Okay, so let's check what is the inputs and the outputs of both flip flops. So uh, deep flip flop A has input DA, okay, and the clock, of course. Then the output is QA and QA bar. Uh, D flip flop B has an input DB, okay, and of course is a clock and two outputs QB and the QB bar. And what is Y? Remember, uh, I, I gathered or concatenate, you know, uh, YA and YB in two one variable called Y, which is two bits. Y of zero is YA, Y of, uh, of one, I'm sorry, Y of zero is QB, and y of one is uh, SQA, okay? And here the order is important because YA was our most significant bit in our design. When we did this design, YA was the most significant bit on the left, okay? And the YB was the least significant bit. So Y of zero is the least significant bit is QB. Y of one is the most significant bit is QA, okay? So that's basically, you know, the design itself. Let's now, check the test bench. Test bench is really easy, really simple, okay? So uh, we have no reset. If you if you guys look at here, there is a reset input, although I'm not using, uh, but I'm gonna use because there will be a problem with such design that we're gonna see right now that will force us to use the reset. So just, you know, consider it not there for now. And consider, you know, the uh, we can even do that. We can even do that. I mean, we can just, you know, uh, yes, comment on that part. Okay. Comment selected, and we even can comment here as well. So you have here just one input. Okay, and just to consider that the reset is not there. There is no reset input. Okay, we can just save this and compile all. We're gonna test now the design without without a reset. Actually, we are ha I have the output here. 
okay and the, but let's do it again so let's restart this simulation here okay and run it for uh, okay here it is so as you see guys the output is just undefined okay and if you remember guys you know uh, in our uh, last VH, vh day lesson videos maybe two, uh, two weeks ago or the week yeah so i said that the reset is really very important because of such example in here so that example is uh, you know is evidence for what i have said okay that we uh, in most of the cases if we didn't use a reset if we didn't start or force, basic force, the outputs of the flip flops to some value in the beginning, then we will just end up having undefined state all over the simulation, okay? And the reason is, is really simple. So uh, when we start, you know, that when we start operating, you know, uh, just to consider this a practical circuit and you just, you know, press some button to, so it will work now. And there will be a clock and everything. Uh, QA and QB might not be even a digital uh, signals, right? Like zero or one, okay? And here, remember, there is a feedback. And the next output is dependent on the previous output or the current output. The next state depend on the present state or the current state. If the current state is undefined, the next state will be and might be undefined. Of course, not all the circuit like this, but most of them needs a reset input. So let's check what the reset will do or how we can add a reset. So the idea is we may, we, we need an input such that when we put this input is one, uh, we will gonna force QA and the QB to be zeros, okay? And we can just do that using very simple trick like what we see here in, in purple, okay? Just an end gate. So in the beginning, this as output of the XO is going directly to the A. Out of the inverter is going directly to BB. I'm gonna just add two end gates and a reset input. Uh, reset input. So now, if reset is one, uh, the inverter will make it zero. So zero is going here. Zero is going here. So the output of the both end gates will be zero. So the A and the B are zeros. When the clock edge comes, QA will copy the A. So QA will be zero. We force it to be zero. And QB will copy QB and will, will uh, you know, and will force QB to be zero as well. Remember, we did this regardless of the XOR output, because once one of the inputs of the end gate is zero, then the output for sure will be zero, even if this guy is undefined. And it is undefined, okay, in the beginning, because QA in the beginning was undefined, okay? So I'm gonna return this back. And comment and you know and of course uh, here is you know that uh, here is this bar here and not reset and not reset so this one here is that one and this end gate here is that one okay so let's now uh, combine everything oh we didn't save this to not work <laughs> so we're gonna compile again and there the reset here as part of the outputs and let's now run. Oops, I am gonna, gonna restart first the simulation. It's run now, yes, it's working. Okay, so in the beginning, it's undefined until, uh, uh, and there is the reset is one. So look at the reset here, the reset is one for four nanoseconds here, okay? So, uh, when the first positive edge come, because the D flip flop is positive edge flip flop, you know, uh, there is DA and DB were zeros. So when the positive edge comes, QA and QB, uh, which will be Y and YB, okay, will be zeros as well. That's why here Y out is zero. Of course, if we, 
expanded log zero and zero. This is basically y, y A and Y B, okay? Then whenever the reset is one, the output will be, will be forced to be zero, okay? Until, you know, this, uh, you know, the reset becomes zero right now. So zero, the inverter will make it one. So now this second input for both and gates are one. So it will not affect our stuff. Now the XOR here and the inverter output will affect our operation, okay? With that positive edge here, okay, uh, the outputs, the current count is zero, zero, or zero, zero, no, zero. And X is one. When X is one, uh, this is basically count down. So since we are zero, you know, nothing less than zero, so we're gonna reset. Reset means go to the highest. So we're gonna go to three. Then the positive edge comes here we, when the X is one, so we count down. So two, the positive edge comes here. We are one, the X is one. So we're gonna count down. So we're gonna go to zero, okay? So uh, now X has been uh, reduced to zero. And this is the first clock edge in which X was zero. And the current output will, was, was zero. So we're gonna increment, so it's gonna be one. Then the second clock edge come, two, three, reset, one, two, three, reset, and so on. Okay, guys, that was basically, you know, the uh, up-down counter and the most important, you know, uh, trick here is the reset input. If you guys work in a company or something, usually you're gonna see this reset input you know, something feature in most of the, the designs that you're gonna see. Why? Because of such problems of undefined, undefined the start. Okay, basically. Of course, you can by the way, you can you can force or use model sim to initialize the QA and the QB, but I reset is much better because this is a trick in the in the, you know in the in the simulation, but reset is something permanent, something that you can do in you know. In, the, in, in, uh, in either simulation or even a practical sense. Okay, guys, thank you very much and see you in the next lesson. Bye bye.